Hello YouTube, my name is Sean. I had this Sony speaker lying around in my garage for a while and I thought maybe what if I can build something cool with it? A portable USB Bluetooth boombox. Now you can use any speaker that you want for example that one or even a bigger one, it's up to you as long as you've got a speaker with a cabinet. Now what do we need to get this project started? you will need a power supply. I'm going to be using this sealed lead acid battery. It is a 12 volt sealed lead acid battery, 7, 7 amps hour. Uh, you will need a USB audio Bluetooth module. You can buy this from eBay for $4 I guess. And a buck converter. Because I'm using 12 volt supply the USB module takes 5 volts. Let's get that out of the wood out of my table. So you will need to drop that 12 volts to 5 volts, otherwise it will fry the chip. In order to do that, you need a buck converter, or because it is using very, very, uh, very few um, power, it's consuming very little power, you can use a fixed um, voltage regulator. LM7805 will do the trick. You will use uh, you can use a couple of decoupling capacitors to smooth out the voltage, but it's a bit time consuming, so I went ahead and bought a buck converter for a dollar from eBay. A voltage indicator because you do want to keep an eye on your uh, battery level because lead acid batteries can become permanently damaged if you drop the voltage be below 10 volts I guess so you do want to keep an eye on it you can build a voltage cutoff uh, circuit so when it reaches to a certain level it would just cut the whole circuit maybe after when I finish with this project I will go ahead and make that add-on and I will up upload the video and last you need is an audio amplifier module I got that from eBay around four dollars. It is a, a TDA seventy two ninety seven amplifier chip. It can um, it can uh, pump twenty five watts per channel, twenty five watts per channel. So it's pretty impressive. I've tested it. Doesn't heat up too much, but if you want to use, uh, if you want to listen to the music at a very high level, uh, you probably need to install a bigger heatsink. Or maybe even a fan it's up to you but for this small speaker that should be all right and uh, you can drive one of these channels straight into this subwoofer because uh, it, this will take care of the lower frequencies where this will take care of the mid highs you'll get a deeper better quality sound okay let's go ahead and install these components and see how it turns out. The first thing first is I um, have gone ahead and taken the bottom plate off. We'll seal it later so when we um, get all the ink components uh, nicely fit inside. Okay. Okay guys, I finally decided to build myself a low voltage cutoff circuit because as you know lead acid batteries can become badly sulfated and it can damage the battery if you run it below 10 volts. So this circuit here will cut off the, the battery, disconnect the battery, if it drops below roughly around 10 volts. Now I will show you the diagram how I built that one. It's very simple. All you need is a, a NPN transistor, a couple of resistors, a Zener diode and a relay. Now let's go and see how this performs. Now my voltage is set to 12.3 volts at the moment. So when I power this on, the light should come on. Yep, the light is working. That light there. Now see what happens when I gradually decrease the voltage because to simulate a battery, battery being drained. Okay, 12.3, it's still on. 11, it's still on. 11, it's still on. 10.5, yep, it's gone. 10.2, it's gone. Let's take it up a little bit. It's come back on. Okay, I'm gonna gradually see it, see the dial there. I'm gradually reducing the voltage. When it gets around 10.2, it will disconnect. Gone. 
Now this circuit will protect your battery from damaging, but it is optional if you want to keep an eye on, on the battery using a, a display indicator or volt voltmeter. It's up to you, but I will show you how to build this circuit in a minute. Okay, the next thing we need is a voltage regulator. This is a fixed volt linear voltage regulator. I put on a heat sink just in case if it heats up. It shouldn't really heat up because we'll be powering this little device, so not much heat should be anticipated. A uh, couple of decoupling capacitors, then again I will show you the diagram in a minute. And uh, this one is used to drop the 12 volt, roughly around 12 volt. Uh, to 5 volt USB drive, so we're going to directly solder the 5 volt output directly into the USB. So stay with me, and uh, it should be fun. All right, folks, it's time to put everything together. It's a bit, a little bit complicated, but trust me, it's very easy. Uh, I've got the uh, speaker installed, the little subwoofer I was talking about. It's right here. I drilled it and I screwed it. And also put a um, USB charging port straight to the battery. It's all hooked up to your um, to your power supply, and uh, it's all linked up. And uh, soon we're gonna test this speaker and see um, how it goes. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, this is how you will convert 12 volt input from the old lead acid battery into 5 volts to your Bluetooth module. <clears throat> you will need a LM3175 linear voltage regulator. The middle pin is goes to ground. So it's um, V in, ground, V out. So 12 volt into your V in, and you will use a one microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So it has to be electrolytic. So you will need to get the platter right, otherwise you will um, blow the capacitor. Same story here. A 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, just to get the ripple current out, and then you'll get the 5 volts. So that goes straight into your Bluetooth module. Now the next one I want to show you is how I built myself a small, simple cutoff circuit. Uh, you will use a 9 volt Zener diode. diode so Zener diode so <clears throat> you'll have it set up this way so what happens is that Zener diode has a breakdown voltage so at 12 volt this will have a breakdown voltage of 9 volts so current will flow through backwards through this uh, resistor into your NPN transistor, which is tip 412C, I think. That will energize the coil. Make sure you have a diode, general purpose diode, pointing that way because just to remove inductive spiking. If you're not, not too sure what inductive spiking is, look into up, uh, look it up on the internet. And what happens when the voltage drop below roughly around 9 I have it 9, but let's say it gets around 10 volts. The, the, the current flowing backwards is going to be very little. So it's going to be pulled down with this ground resistor. So it's, nothing is going to go forward this way. So this circuit roughly works around 10.2 volts cut off. So play around with the resistor value or Zeno diode for you to get whatever voltage you want. So that's going to go into your V out. That's going to go into your uh, supply. So this circuit will cut off 10.2, uh, saving your battery. Okay, everything is done. And uh, power is on. So you can see the red light is uh, lighting up. And I put a, a 12 volt battery at the back. I glued the battery with the cabinet, so it's pretty strong. And you might want to ask me how you can charge this. Uh, connected speaker ports to 12 volts. So you can use it to power your LED or whatever you like, but you can use this as a charging port too. Now, see how this works. Now, nothing connected, as you can see. I'll put this on this corner. Let's go to my phone. 
I'm playing uh, non copyrighted music because of YouTube. Here we go. Press play. It's loading. Yeah. Volume down. Or volume up. And if you want to charge your phone, you can do so as well. You will need a, a USB charger. That's charging now. That's charging. Stop charging. That's your speaker. You can turn it around, take it around. If you want to switch it off, done. And that's your portable speaker. Enjoy and thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave your comments and I will try to answer your questions as much as I can. Thank you. Thank you for watching.